Hey, welcome to Diversity in Cinema Academy. Today's video is part two of my videography series. So we're going to be discussing locations and I'm currently at my location. I'm in the parking garage and that is one of the first things you need to do when you're scouting locations is to check the parking situation. And this is a huge parking garage with a ton of people, but I am going to be shooting on the weekend. And when I get with my client, I'm going to ask her more about this whole little parking situation because I have equipment and that's why it's important to understand your whole parking situation and how you're going to be trucking a whole bunch of equipment to the location so anyway I've already did part one if you haven't checked that video out be sure to do that after you finish this video that is all about the beginning phases of getting a videography gig basically how to do a project proposal and send it to your client and then also creating a project management calendar now if you're new to my channel i'm theta catalan the founder of diversity and cinema academy this is the place to be if you're an aspiring filmmaker video creator and screenwriter Okay, so the video that I'm going to be doing for my client is basically like a short documentary of her career as an attorney. She has recently been honored with an award, and so I'm just going to follow that process. And this is one of the locations that I am thinking of doing. This is one of her conference rooms, and so this is just like one of the locations that I think would be a really great spot to interview. I'm going to be interviewing about 10 different people um, that know her as an attorney, and so I'm thinking that this location right here will be a really great spot to do the interview so what do you think let me know in the comments below when i go on a location scout i take a location fact sheet with me so i can fill out uh, different information about the location so it basically it will have the location name the location address and phone number and whoever my contact person is whatever stipulations like for instance for in, in order for me to get in this building i had to have access to the building they had to call down to the front desk and let them know that i am actually coming and then they'll allow me to come up into the building and those are all things that you need to know when you are scouting a location so and then you need to have a contact person so if it's going to be your client or if it's going to be someone at their front desk so say for instance her assistant welcomed me to the office and then you know she said hey you can go ahead and look at the different conference rooms so just know that who you're going to be talking to when you go to your different locations and you'll have all of that on your location fact sheet then once you get there like i mentioned when i first arrived I started with the parking garage, right? So basically you scope out the parking parking garage and if you say for instance I had to get a ticket in order to get in, then I need to check and see if the parking will be validated, right? So those are that's something else that you should do when you arrive. And then another thing that I'm going to be looking for is you know bathrooms where the bathrooms are set up if we're going to be setting up craft services my client herself is going to be doing the hors d'oeuvres and you know some wine and some beverages so that's not something that i necessarily have to do but if you was doing your own short documentary that is something that you need to think of and then you need to find a location where you can put that so um currently i am just looking at the different conference rooms and then obviously the the front area um, where the front desk is at um, those are the areas that I am scouting just to see what would be a good spot so this is one of the conference rooms that I'm in and so I kind of like this backdrop but um, I have it currently <laughs> the lens set for me sitting here at the table so I'm going to take some shots with the camera just to see um, how I can tighten up and see how I can make it more pleasantly appear 
appealing when I actually shoot the, the video. So say for instance that backdrop with this picture here might be good. So I'm gonna take some pictures, tighten up and see what that look like and let me know what you think. But before we jump into that, here's my friendly reminder. Please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can stay abreast of every time I drop a new video. Okay, so now I'm checking to see if this would be a good backdrop. Uh, one thing about when you're checking to see if you have a good backdrop, all of this stuff that's on here wouldn't necessarily be pleasant to the eye, so you would move that from there. And I don't know if I'm really feeling this one. What do you guys think? Okay, so this is another spot that I am thinking about doing. Um, this is basically a glass wall right here, so on the day of, I, if I'm going to be bringing my own lighting, then I have to be very careful that it is not having a reflection on the wall. So considering that they have a lot of lighting up in here, once I review this and to see, because that's why I'm here doing the scouting location and bought my equipment to just see what all I would need to do. I might be able to, especially with this Nikon Z30, I might not necessarily have to set up any lighting. I just need to see how harsh it is and am I getting enough... Um, texture in the face uh, does it look shadowed or anything like that so those are just some of the things that i am paying attention to part of this location scout also when you on your location scout besides having your location fact sheet be sure to bring a notebook or something so you could jot down any other notes that you may have because the sheet may not be enough so i always bring my future icon leading motion pictures notebook that you can get on amazon i bring it with me everywhere and it's so professional sleek looking like so when you go out you really look like a professional okay so now i'm in the third conference room and i'm taking a look to see if this can be another area that we can shoot we want to shoot in multiple areas of the office just so that when we are doing the interview portions of the documentary that they don't all seem like we just threw everybody in one room and conducted all the interviews at one time so we just you know want to move around and so i'm just trying to find different areas that can work this could possibly work of course i would want to move this easel because <laughs> that's not uh, appealing to the eye i saw a floor tree in one of the other conference rooms that maybe we can move right here so because you still want to do something with that and you know so maybe i'll have the the interviewee right here and then we have a tree like directly behind them so it can just be appealing to the eye so this is could be another option you know let me know what your thoughts so another thing that you want to do when you are scouting a location is you want to make sure that the sound is good and that you don't have any sound problems because some of the things that can cause a problem when you're at a location is if it's like terrible sound like you're constantly hearing traffic or you're constantly hearing airplanes overhead or there's just noisy neighbors or whatever those are the things that you need to consider when choosing a location and so and another thing with locations too if you have access to be able to turn off the air conditioning units because some air conditioning units can be extremely loud and you can hear all that air in your uh, audio so that's another thing that you want to check for um, a lot of times with corporate buildings <laughs> you would not have access to the air conditioning unit so you tend to have to tough it out and have a good um sound mixer who can kind of get all of that up out of there so that's just something else that you need to be looking for when you are scouting a location i wanted to see what it would look like if i shot towards window typically you don't want to shoot towards windows because it's normally going to be blown out or the camera will overcompensate and it will go towards the light and it will make you dark uh, I do still have the overhead lights on up in this room so that's another thing that I'm taking a look at is that the these fluorescent lights they kind of have like some kind of orange orangey yellow glow to it um, that I'm not feeling because <laughs> as you can see I look orangey and yellow so that mean if I shoot up in here I'm at may have to use my own lights up in here. So I'm about to turn the lights off to see exactly what it would look like because again, with this Nikon Z30, it does really well in low light. And plus we have all of this great ambiance light from this natural lighting from the windows. So we, I'm about to see what that looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the lights out. As you can see, the window is extremely blown out. Um, so if I shot up in this room, I would 
have to bring my own lighting because I don't want that orange lighting. But if I rotate the camera to the other angle where uh, we're not shooting towards the windows, then maybe it'll look better and we'll see what it looks like. So let's try that out. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The light is still off. I would definitely still go with the lights being off up in this room and using my light set to light this side of me. I'm getting a great lighting from the windows right here and so I would just need some light here and then maybe up front and it just depending if they <laughs> they have glasses like myself then you know I'm still gonna have to be kind of off to the side giving them some light so um, but that's what it looks like if I was to shoot in this room another thing that you want to do is make sure that you are looking for the power boxes and where the power outlets at, are at so you can know where to plug up your equipment and to see if it's even feasible or if you're going to need to bring even more cords and for your light equipment like if it's not directly in the room that you have and you have to run it all the way through or something like that 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 is just something that you need to think about when you are scouting a location okay so another thing that you want to do is you want to check the floors because if you're going to have them doing any walking and talking you want to make sure that it's not on any floors that the heels will be clacking against the floors right so, so far in majority of this office, it is carpet, so we wouldn't have any of that noise going on. So, that's a plus. So, y'all hear how my shoes are clacking in this hallway? This is not a good area to do a walk and record because you can hear me clacking on this floor. Okay, so if you're finding any value in anything that I have said thus far in this video, go ahead and hit that like button and let me know and let that YouTube algorithm know. Okay. This is the last conference room that I'm scouting. It's a cute little room. I actually like it a lot. It has great natural lighting coming from here. Again, these lights have that orangey look. So I'm going to test it out to see what it looks like without any lighting on. Um, more than likely, that's going to be my go-to is to turn off the lights, use a lot of the natural lighting, and then use um, one of my lights or a couple of my lights to get some light on this side of the face, but um, in the front of the face. So, but I think this looks really good. Let's check it out and see what this Nikon Z30 is doing with that low light. Okay, so this is what it looks like with um, majority of the lights off. I noticed that they had some great recessed lights right here, and then they have a little lamp right here that can give it a little bit of ambiance. So I wanted to see what that looked like because I believe that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that lamp on to give it, you know, a little more texture and feel to the um, video. But I think it looks good. So again, light's going to be off. I'm going to have additional light coming in from this side in the front and we have wonderful natural lighting over here so what do you think do you, which office do you like out of the four that i've shown so far another thing that you want to think about is where you're going to stage your actors cast crew um and for this particular um gig where my interviewees are going to be staged at um, i will discuss that with my client because obviously she has a plan in place where she wants to serve hors d'oeuvres and everything i think this conference room would be best unless she actually has a break area so that's something that you need to ask them because then that would be a great area for you to stage your craft services and your talent so I did find out about the parking situation. I'm going to be able to park in front of the building since I have equipment. It's free parking. I can park there the whole time, which is awesome. So <laughs> I realized on my way home, I was like, wait a minute. I kept the camera in slow motion mode while I was recording some other stuff. So here I'm going to my next location, which is the Grand Hyatt in Buckhead, Atlanta. So we're just going to take a quick little run through of there because I pretty much walked you through how to scout a location at the law firm. So 
that's it for this video on location scouting. Next week, I'm going to be talking about the equipment that you need for your video shoot. So check back in with me next week, okay? And let me know what was your favorite part of this video and if you found anything that was useful to your videography career. Don't forget to check out part one of this videography series. So check it out now.